Do you guys remember how back in this year's GTC, Nvidia accidentally leaked GPT-4's parameter count which turns out to be 1.8 trillion? While OpenAI was still too shy to be open about it, Nvidia did us all a favor and gave us the closest estimate we'll probably ever know about GPT-4. But 1.8 trillion parameters? That model probably needs like 77 H100s which are like 2 million dollars worth of GPUs just to hold it all together within the VRAM. But who in their right mind would change something so utterly expensive? And thank god, OpenAI OpenAI was still sane enough and chose not to do that. Hence, they have this thingy behind the 1.8T which says MOE. But what even is MOE? Well, typically I would tell you to watch this old video of mine, but that video is dog water, don't watch it. So this time it is my redemption arc, and then we'll go through some of the latest insane MOE developments. Fundamentally, ChatGPT and alike are built on these transformer layers where it contains attention blocks and many others. Then these layers are repeatedly stacked on top of each other and train on a large corpus of text tokens which somehow can now write you your email slop in perfect corporate speak like it's black magic. But as spending two million dollars on GPUs just to be able to load a single model and have people use it for free no longer sound appealing to the investors, companies and researchers are now looking for ways to run models much more cheaply as scaling any bigger is just going against the first rule of capitalism that is losing money. So with the sudden rise and success of MOE LLM called Mixtral AX7B proposed by Mistral, it kind of went viral for how different it is compared to other LLM models and how much better it performs given a cheaper cost to load, train, and run. On top of a very weird naming scheme that probably confused the entire community including myself, I think we didn't properly comprehend how it actually works. To put the record straight, Mixtro AX7B is not really 8 different 7B models as that will end up with 56B in total but Mixtro only has 45 billion parameters. The expert that the MOE concept is actually referring to is the FIFA forward network block within a transformer layer here. This block is where a model stores factual knowledge, which directly relates to a model's performance. And in Mixtral's case, instead of having only one feedforward network, there are eight of them side by side where a router will pick exactly two feedforward networks aka experts to pass the token through. And the router knows what to do because it'll learn during training which token will be assigned to which expert and use that knowledge during inference time. So by only picking two experts, this is also called top two routers. Routing. There's also the whole problem of load balancing where its purpose is to make sure that a router doesn't only pick one or two experts and make sure that all experts are fully utilized or else it really ain't a more optimal model. On top of that, these experts are unique to their own layer. So with Mixtro AX7B which has 32 transformer layers, the math is there would be a total of 256 experts each with 176 million parameters and 32 routers each with 32k parameters in the entire model. So this model has a total of 47B parameters, but thanks to the MOE mechanism, it only has a 12.8B active parameters during training or inference. Which if you take a normal 47B transformer model, aka a dense model, it's basically 4 times less hardware usage, or if you compare to a 13B model, it'll be more expressive as it technically has a knowledge pool that a 47B model has. For a more accurate performance comparison, some say that you can find an MOE model equivalent to a dense model by using geometric mean. So AX7B that has has an active parameter of 12.8B and a total parameter of 47B is equivalent to a 22B dense model. While Mistral did not exactly invent this sparse MOE method, they were still the one that popularized the idea due to how successful their model was at that time, with sparse MOE originally introduced in 2017 and the original original MOE that can actually be dated back to 1991. So this method technically has a pretty long history. However, Mixro's application of MOE has its own downfall too. And there are currently two major issues. The first one is knowledge hybridity. This means each of the experts aren't really experts in the literal sense, because 8 or even 16 experts per layer would still have each expert covering a super large and diverse domain of knowledge. On top of only picking two experts to utilize its knowledge, this means that the knowledge of the other experts are completely ignored, which is not as ideal as each expert covers a set of diverse knowledge that might come in handy. The second one is knowledge redundancy, where a token that is assigned to a different experts may still require the same common knowledge for processing. This means that multiple experts may have the same knowledge which leads to redundancy and inefficiency in expert parameters. So in order to evolve into the next level, these two problems have to be addressed while maintaining the load balance so that each expert is all equally used. Meta then proposed a really interesting method that kind of tackles the first issue which is called the branch train mix method. So instead of training the MOE model from scratch, each feedforward block 
Warlock or the soon-to-be expert will instead be taken out of a range of different pre-trained dense models. All of them have the same base model, but each of them was further fine-tuned on a different subset of data, which would make these feedforward networks have a human-specified knowledge domain. The feedforward network block will then be taken out of each LLMs and combined into a single MOE LLM, where it will be fine-tuned as a unified model again along with the routers. So BTX is completely different to your typical MOE, where experts are organized with human inputs instead of fully determined by how a router organizes the tokens. However, the BTX research still stated that it is unclear which method is better than the other and more experiments are still needed. And maybe to improve MOE even further is not about looking into how the experts are organizing the data, but instead experiment with the amount of experts there are. Which brings us to DeepSeek MOE, where they completely dropped the idea of using a fixed amount of experts. This six months old paper offers a very interesting solution. While maintaining the same parameter count, they propose something called fine-grained expert segmentation, where it divides each expert by a number m, which makes the total amount of experts increase by m times the original amount. But why is having more experts a good thing? Wouldn't segmentation decreases its parameter count and expressiveness? Well, from a combinatorial perspective, this strategy will greatly enhance the combinatorial flexibility of activated experts. For example, if you only have one out of eight expert active at a time, then there is only eight possible expert configurations you can have active for any given layer. However, if you have four out of eight experts active at a time, then there is 70 possible expert configurations you can have active at a time. This increase in experts can potentially enhance the ability to achieve more accurate and targeted knowledge acquisition in organization. And to also address the second issue I mentioned earlier, they add in a technique called shared expert isolation, where it always include one specific expert in all activations, which aims to capture and consolidate common knowledge that various contexts will always require. So this should theoretically improve the parameter efficiency for the other experts and ensures that each routed expert is indeed specialized and locked in on their distinctive aspects. And this was a big paper for MOE. DeepSeek MOE 2B achieved comparable performance to older MOE methods that are 1.5 times larger in active parameters count, all thanks to the new techniques they have came up with. Additionally, they open source a 16B model to prove a point with an activation of 3 billion parameters and being able to produce LAMA 2 7B level results while being much cheaper to train and run. Keep in mind that they compare to LAMA 2 is because this paper is 6 months old, but this has brought the MOE meta into the fine-grained expert era. So by looking at the scaling law of MOE, more experts equals good, well that is if you look at it with matching computes instead of total tokens trained, which is of course more reasonable. So let's just spawn more experts, right? Maybe tens of thousands? <clears throat> Rookie number. Introducing mixture of million experts. If fine-grained experts are that good, why not just make a million of them? Well, of course, this is not a brute force method either. There comes a lot of problems if you just spawn a million experts. Like, imagine the slowdown of having a router picking a few top experts out of a million of them when you run it. So the typical router has to take its leave here. Instead, the author proposed something called a peer layer, short for parameter efficient expert retrieval. This mechanism utilizes the product key technique for sparse retrieval for the millions of experts and reduces the expert picking process drastically. And unlike your typical MOE where the expert is identical as the original fee forward network in a transformer, every expert in MOME is actually a singleton MLP. In other words, it has only one hidden layer with a singular neuron. So to compensate with this insanely reduced expressiveness of the experts, the author took inspiration from the multi-head attention mechanism and applied it here so that it can quickly route together a very large number of tiny experts through a learnable index structure. So this along with Pierce mechanism, it dynamically assembles an MLP with a number of neurons by aggregating a number of singleton MLPs retrieved from a shared repository. Which if you stare at it very hard, you can kind of see that MOME is pretty much assembling an expert from scratch for its MOE process. So when you kind of look at previous MOE papers saying that they are optimizing parameter sharing and efficiency, and then now look at what MOME is doing, it's literally optimizing on a completely different dimension. If people can still surpass this level of parameter efficiency for the experts, I would be very surprised. But we're still not done yet, as things would usually get more interesting the larger we scale them. Another reason to have a large number of experts is that the phenomenon of lifelong learning would emerge, which would address the problem of catastrophic forgetting that the current LLM architecture suffers severely from. And the researchers observed that fine-grained MOE might be a promising approach to fix that. In MOME's paper, it seems that with this amount of experts, if you freeze or partially freeze old weights and update only the new ones, it can achieve lifelong 
learning without causing it to lose what it already knows. In the ideal world, lifelong learning should be able to take in data streams that are indefinitely long or never ending, and through having an ever expanding pool of experts, MOE might actually make it. But the main catch for this will be whether the learned routing is really robust and can effectively and accurately find out what it needs as it searches across millions of tiny experts. And so far, what I talked about today is just one of the rabbit holes of MOE. Maybe next time, we'll dive in other banger rabbit holes about MOE, like how people are efficiently fine tuning fine grained MOE or MOE's routers that can be taken out to improve LLMs in other contexts. So stay tuned. And if these machine learning topics are fascinating to you and you want to get into the field, today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, has got you covered with the fundamentals. Brilliant is a learning platform where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons ranging from math, data analysis, programming, and AI. This means that you'll be solving problems hands-on and play with concepts interactively, which is also proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos. With all the content on Brilliant being carefully crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Google, and more, Brilliant helps you build your critical thinking skills through problem solving and not memorizing. Along with easy-to-access lessons, whether you want to spend five minutes a day or chomp it all down during your free time, these fun lessons can help you to have both personal and professional growth. Right now, they have also just published their lessons on how LLMs work, where they provide interactive content where you can explore how LLMs build vocabulary, choose their next word, and more. And if you want to revisit some of the Calculus 1 or 2 concepts, they have some of the best visualizations to help you learn or refresh your memory with, and maybe playing with Brilliant will help you build a super strong intuition that you'll never forget. So to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash bycloud or click on the link down in the description. You will also get a 20% off an annual premium subscription. And thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you like today's collection of papers, you can check out my AI papers newsletter where I cover the latest juicy ML concepts or papers every week and explain it simply. It'll contain some very interesting papers that I don't have time or might be late making videos about. But anyways, a big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Mariz, Migulim, Deegan, Fifel, Robert Zavirasa, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.